after my second failed attempt in affiliate, I decided that the, in the third time I will go, yeah, one on stagnant money, follow alongs and all this stuff. And also I will have a partner because I know that this will be much easier for me to go through hard times. I was selling a domain names in, in my school just to get some money, you know. But I think I was like 16 or 17, we had like a, a police raid, you know. They were advertising so much on TV, consumers would go and look for more information online, and that's where I scooped them up. They needed some international SEO advice, and they got in touch with me, right? So I, I knew that I had something that's extraordinary, that we can scale this, like, mm -hmm. very, because it's super hard to copy this product. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations with a Marketer. My name is Chad Wilton of Affiliate World. We're going to be doing a series of these videos over the next little while where we invite friends of Affiliate World on to share with you their hero stories of how they came to be, um, you know, what they're currently working on right now, anything that will be able to provide value and insights on so that, that you can either apply to your business today or even give you ideas on where to pivot to next. Um, we'll have everyone from e-commerce marketers to brand owners, agency owners, and definitely some of the world's leading affiliate marketers on the show. Today is no different for our first episode. We've got Timote Gretschner. He is a longtime friend of Affiliate Worlds. He has been a speaker of mine for the past couple shows. And uh, if you're on STM Forum, you know him as Wakeboarder. Uh, like I said, we discussed the story of how he got into the industry, how uh, joint ventures have helped him actually um, progress to where he is today, and, uh, and how he's managed to pivot from affiliate marketing into e-commerce. Um, you know, we go over some of his uh, campaigns, uh, how user-generated content's performing really well for him, and more interesting enough, how he's applied affiliate hacks to uh, the D2C model, and how he's even taken that step further to get from online to offline, and how he's cracking into uh, retailers with this product. Lots to learn. Um, it's a great first episode. I hope you really enjoy this and those to come. So without further ado, let's begin. I think the call for us is going to be a fun one. Um, I'd yeah. like to dig into kind of more of the, the history, uh, the beginnings, kind of how you evolved, because I know you've been um, super active in the last couple of years on SDM, um, testing out mm. a bunch of things. So why don't we start by digging back, digging deep and to kind of that turning point of when you decided, you know, normal life, you know, the corporate structure wasn't for you, or maybe you were in a job like that. Where was that defining moment when you said, I want to go all in with, uh, with marketing? Yeah. So, um, actually everything started, I think like 10 years ago, I was, uh, I was working actually for, um, one of the biggest European, uh, a scene on TV company. They were like very direct response oriented. They were selling actually products, the same products that dropshippers are selling right now on Facebook, but they were selling it on directly on the, uh, through infomercials. Okay. So yeah. I was on the other end in the call center. I was doing cold calling, actually outbound, calling people through the telephone like every single day. I was doing this for like three years, every day, eight hours. Wow. And it was like, I mean, at the very beginning, I, I love it. It was, it was amazing, you know, because I figured out, okay, you can actually manipulate the people, you know, just with words. And I was yeah. quite a good seller. But, uh, I mean, at, at one point, it was just too much. I, I couldn't pick up the phone and, and start dialing anymore because it was so, like, you need to be all the time super happy. You need to be full of enthusiasm and you, to, yeah. you know, it's at one point it gets just it's too much. Three years so, is a long time though. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I mean, I was selling like mattresses, pillows, uh, some Asinon TV products, tons of them. Um, why don't you, why don't you walk me, yeah. why don't you walk me through uh, one of your sale sales calls? If I said, "Hey, I'm kind of interested in this mattress, but why wouldn't I just buy it yeah. from the store?" Yeah, I mean, so our main reason to call you was usually like, uh, so you were already our customer probably in the past once in the past ten years. So right. my reason was that you had a, a birthday in last seven, uh, seven or fourteen days. So my reason to call was just like, hey, Chad, 
Um, so I know that you have a, like a birthday seven days ago. So I wish you all the best um, and la 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 and la la. And then uh, because like many of those um, people on the phone, they just feel very lonely, you know. And right. when somebody calls them, they're like, so, oh, they just want to talk with someone. But then on the other <laughs> hand, you're like, you're as a telephone agent. It's kind of a Trojan horse, you know. You Those are different days, too, when people were excited for phone calls. Now everyone's suspicious of who's calling them. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And also it's a uh, it's different audience, you know. Like right now, because those audiences that we, we were calling them, they were like 60 plus most of mm -hmm. the time, you know. Right. So many of them were just like alone. They were like at home, uh, but not all of them, but there was like huge. I think like the, the majority was probably 60, uh, 60 plus. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then you just start like, like with a simple uh, question, like chat, can you just tell me like, when was the last time that you changed your pillow? And uh, I was like, probably more than two, year, two years. And most of people, they say, yeah, way more than two years, you know? And then I have like tons of lists of objectives, like what to say to you that you will feel, oh shit, I will feel bad if I go in the bed with the same pillow tonight because I know that I can get a <laughs> shitload of uh, <laughs> diseases and stuff, right. you know? So mo this, this is like one kind of, um, so we were selling fear or we were selling emotions. For example, if uh, there was, uh, very popular one juicer you know uh, yeah. that you can throw in all the like uh, the fruits and vegetables and so on and you just ask like um, like a lady of 75 years old like what do you think what's better to just uh, when you're um, when your kids come to your home what would you like to offer them uh, uh, one glass of uh, coca-cola with tons of sugar in it or your freshly made juice from your apples from your yard you know or <laughs> so these are like some of the questions uh, but you have like a lot of different ones and then it's that that's how you actually try to you just need to be like a people person like very mm -hmm. people person if you want to do this job because you need to it's, it's kind of a communication you know and then you just of need course. to proactively listen what they're telling to you and find the product to that you will uh, try to sell them i can already feel the wheels turning as this evolves and so you you kind of got sick of it three years being on even for like an extrovert even for a people person three years being on 24 7 in your job can be exhausting and so you kind of yeah. said hey what was what was the next step from there uh, for the last six months before I, I was still working in the call center, but, but I started selling to businesses. So I, I was moved to the different department and I was selling advertising. So this was actually the first um, co contact me with, uh, with like to figure out about online advertising. I was actually selling um, um, inventory on some uh, marketplace in Slovenia. Uh, and this is, then I re that was actually the first thing that I saw those um, huge landing uh, sales letters, you know, mm -hmm. when people were selling like some patches for weight loss and some patches for um, quit smoking and all this stuff. And I was like, Oh fuck, you know, I want to do this. I, I want to sell this kind of stuff. Uh, so <laughs> and then um, I decided, okay, um, I will put like, I think I took like 2000 euros of my money and I bought um, so uh, on, as a side job I opened a, a new company uh, yeah. and I create like a landing page and HTML and all this stuff and I, I start selling um, like robotic vac vacuum cleaners but yeah. they were not like a vacuum cleaner because it was just a ball that goes like completely randomly with some uh, patches <laughs> on it and actually I was selling this on on Facebook in 2010, I think. And wow. I did some, yeah, it was like quite, back then there was just like a uh, right hand ad on the, yeah, on the Facebook. the right you know? side, yeah. Right side ad, yeah, right hand. So um, I think then was like, I did something, but it was not very like huge, but I got a feeling, I know how to run ads, uh, I know how to be landing pages, HTML, CSS, and all this stuff. And then after like, I bought a new product because in Slovenia, it was like super funny because I was watching the TV, the news, and there was like a new law in Slovenia that was saying like, if you're, if uh, the policeman 
catch you that you're talking on the phone, yeah. you can get a um, fine of uh, 150 euros. So they increase if you're, if you're the fine selling, if, you if you're were, selling on the phone. Exact, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So they increase drastically <clears throat> because like people start using phones more often in the, um, in the car and so on. So I went on the uh, internet, I, I, I don't know, in some random web page and I bought Bluetooth speaker. Um, I think I bought like 200 pieces from some UK company because yeah. I didn't buy it from China because uh, it was much faster for me. So right. I just bought it from, uh, from UK. I, I, I think I paid like 10, K, uh, 10, uh, 10 euros for them. Uh, I have, again, very long sales letter. And then I went uh, and I, I, I was actually selling it as an advertorial. And the story was like, hey, uh, the story was like how one guy actually tricked the policeman to save 150 euros. But the, the reality was just, so he was saved 150 euros because he bought my product, you know, because that was the fun. <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was the, the angle. And actually, that, that was working amazing. So right. uh, this was actually my first kind of a success. So, right. um, and then but I, so that, just, yeah. Just to take a step back, though, because you, you went from being in a call center to buying your own products and then, um, you know, putting landing pages together, running Facebook ads. Like, yeah. where did you gain that knowledge? Was it just YouTube or were there courses out there? I know that you're on, you were on SDM a couple of years ago, but this feels like it's dated a little bit further back. Yeah, yeah. so this is actually just Google. Google forums and I, because actually how I started with everything online was because I am, um, you know, the IRC program, the, the chatting stuff like 15 years ago. Anyway, it was like very, 15 years ago, you know, and we were actually, <laughs> um, we had like DDoS bot networks and all this crazy stuff. And when I was like 16 years old, we have like the uh, police raids because uh, we, we have a, a bot that was spreading. Um, I like where this is you, going. <laughs> I mean, we, I, I was like script kitty. I was a script kitty who was running, I found on dark web different uh, bots, you know, that were spreading and infecting computers in Thailand. And then we have like a DDoS network. Uh, so we were getting like the stolen credit cards and uh, all this crazy stuff. And when right. I was, I think I was like 16 or 17, we have like a, a police raid, you know? So we had like at 6 a.m., three cops, <laughs> they, they knock on, my, on our door. As so a 16 this is year actually, old, you must be freaking out. This was like how actually everything started because of that, you know. And um, but then I, I I moved to Studio Modern. I mean, the company that I was, I was selling all these products. So when I was doing this kind of stuff, I learned how to run HTML, uh, Linux server, Slack for FreeBSD. So I was like, where I was on computer all my all all day. So I, okay. I knew the basic knowledge of. Um, PHP, CSS, HTML, all this stuff. And then when I start, um, when, and then I move uh, to, to another city just to start uh, doing this uh, calling in the uh, in call center. Then I find out about the marketing and then I just try to connect my knowledge from my, like when I was 16 and doing crazy stuff online just uh, because we were selling domain names, you know, with stolen credit cards, I was selling uh, domain names in, in my school just to get some money, you know, but it, it, it was like a cool, I mean, back then I got like, I don't know, like 100 euros, you know, but that for a 16 year old kid, that was like huge amount of money. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, this is actually how all this internet stuff uh, started, you know, like to, to be comfortable with uh, Linux and uh, terminal and like this technical aspect of how internet works. Mm -hmm. Then all the, and then after that, I acquired, I mean, I got this knowledge about sales, um, how to start because this company, they actually, they put a lot of money in us to educate us that we were like, you know, like a telephone terrorist, you know, we were like calling every single day, eight hours a day. Um, and then I just said, okay, let's try to use this knowledge from mm -hmm. the call center. Yeah. Uh, because I, I was reading all those books like Joseph Sugarman triggers, you know, and, and all those like very books that are classics in direct response marketing, hard sales. like 50 yeah. years ago because of the mm -hmm. hard, hard sales completely. So, and then I said, okay, if I can 
if I can sell this some products through the phone for like a mattress for like 2000 euros, then it's definitely, I will find a way how I can do this on Facebook or like, yeah. I mean, not on Facebook, but uh, how I will sell the product just online. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's how I then start building landing pages and uh, buying ads on Facebook. Amazing. Amazing. I, I'm going to fast forward a little bit because you're, I looked on to SCM and your first post on SCM was like 2018, June, 2018. And it was uh, testing, it was a testing offers in like uh, hunting bots. So now you've almost flipped it and you're hunting bots um, for exclusion. Basically is this, was that post basically for native native ad buying or? No, this is for pops. So okay, for pops, actually, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I mean, funny thing is that I have like three, like my first tag that money attempt was in 2014 because back then there was like, I, all the time I have like a full-time job, but at yeah. one point I think that I don't know how, but somehow I, I know about the stack of money and I was like, Oh shit, you know, this is the best community. I know that people there are making shitloads of money, but I, I never have so I, I tried when they were like mobile app installs, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I never really make any money. So I have like a bankroll of let's say 5,000 euros. Yeah. Um, and I just tried and I never have any op uh, follow along or any mastermind. But, so I just spent all the money and didn't make any back. So in 2018, <laughs> I think it was my third attempt when I, I have like, I think like a budget of 25K yeah. Uh, and a partner and I said, okay, so this is the third time I'm going to stack that money. I will go now all in. I will like have a like, very detailed process. I will have, I will test shitloads of offers. I will have mastermind, follow along, like everything that it's possible to have to, to make money with pubs because I know that there were people making like $500 net profit per day. I, I knew yeah. that they were and I, I know that if I will be persistent enough and if I will be very active and if I will share everything I learn and every single obstacles, if I share on the follow along, I will collect the feedback. Um, and this is actually how, how my story on Stack That Money started. That's why I'm so like, so, uh, uh, I mean, I really love Stack That Money community because like, just because I know like many people when I, because of this, my follow along were like just randomly adding me on like Telegram, like, Hey buddy, I just want to say, <laughs> keep up the good, good work. I hope that you have just like random people that you don't even know. And I was like, yeah. you know, when you're doing like, when you're in the red numbers, like three days in a row, and then you just get some random message from some guy from New Zealand, you know, it's like, Oh, yeah. I'm from stack that money. Oh, and, oh, cool. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's the community aspect. I mean, everyone, you know, that we work individually, um, at home, but it's like we have a, it's a massive network that really supports everyone, everyone another. I remember, I think, well, you came onto the scene really hard on SCM because you were doing lots of threads, lots of replies, you were, you this nice resurgence of, of fresh blood on there. And I think when we first started talking, you were blown away at this community and, and relating it to like affiliate world, you, we were talking about how we could potentially get a group of people together um, even after the show or before the show because you know online is super important but becoming face to face with these people that you chat with all the time the ones that are supporting you the ones that are you know holding your torch in the background while you're you're failing and bringing you back up and mm -hmm. uh, inserting the positive uh, energy into you because at times it can be really tough um, as affiliates yeah. and I mean you know just even these past few stories of how hard it can, it can be um, yeah, I think you were saying through pops, uh, I know you were testing, uh, dating, what other uh, op types of offers were you testing with pops? Mm -hmm. So actually I, I started with pops with sweepstakes and there I actually, I, I got my first su success there, but because, because of the volatility, I said, okay, so I have some knowledge now. Um, I, I wanted to go into the native because I think, okay, this will give me like some stability. Mm -hmm. in affiliate world, you know, no, it's like, <laughs> <community summary. laughs> you know, but anyway, no. then, uh, so then I started running, I think I was running a native and casino offers. Yeah. Yeah. I was in dating, but just with, uh, just for a short period of time, because like the partner that we are like in this together, mm -hmm. he was more for dating and we were doing this for like a month, but we didn't get any like uh, success, honestly. So yeah. then we moved to native running like casino offers. We did something, but 
actually the pops were still doing the best you know okay. um so yeah actually this was yeah i think this was then the the last attempt uh before i completely stopped running pops and so really so how did the joint venture how did the jv look with you and your partner um like was it just shared skill sets or like was it funding how did, and how did you guys connect initially what does that look like uh yeah so actually he was my one of my best friends um so we have like very uh different skill sets um so so we just agree that he will do all the lenders he will do a clean on the lenders and so we have like a process how to because we knew that if we want to make pops work we need to be like very efficient when it comes to testing mm -hmm. like super efficient i know that we need to test 20 offers per day we need to like test different languages different geos because you know it's very hard to find today um, a winning offer and also when you find it it probably if you go too aggressive you have like, like one week so the only way to do this it, it was to, to partner with someone that uh, mm -hmm. it's not just about this that you're fast but also when things go bad because at the very beginning you need to have like some uh, not emotional support but when you're fucked you know when edit is down when you're in numbers it's much easier if they're like two heads because it's much easier to brainstorm and all this stuff. So after my second failed attempt in affiliate, I decided that the, in the third time I will go, yeah, one on stagnant money, follow alongs and all this stuff. And also I will have a partner because I know that this will be much easier for me to go through hard times. Yeah. And, and it holds you a little bit more accountable as well. Um, exactly. You know, I just wrote a piece that we're going to be releasing on um, masterminds and how to formulate masterminds and, and how uh, useful it can be, like not just accountability, but it's mm -hmm. shared, shared skill sets is a big one too. Um, but it's, um, it's kind of an underused or a yeah. forgotten yeah, yeah. Uh, leveraging skill uh, that we'll be releasing pretty soon. But it seemed to work yeah. for you, but, and, but you're not currently JVing. I know you've done a lot since then. Um, like we could, I'd, I'd be interested to jump towards kind of what we were discussing last call and, and um, just understand a little bit more how Wild Boar came to be. Because I know there's a tie with your family and, mm -hmm. and how you kind of eventually partnered with your dad to make that happen. Can you tell me a little bit about Wild Boar? Yeah, so actually, it, I think it was like October 2000, 2018, just right after I, I was still running uh, Pops campaigns and sweepstakes because this was actually my only revenue stream. Um, but because at one point then I started moving and testing natives and um, and um, because I just wanted to build with my skill set and then at, at that point also my partner he was not he had some personal issues and he decided to to move its own way so I was on mm -hmm. my own and I said okay so I, I want to build something that actually can can last a bit longer mm -hmm. you know it's because like uh, lifespan of affiliate campaign is it's very short it's super yeah. stressful so. Um, so my father is a, it's a hunter, like super passionate hunter. And he created the one product already at the beginning of 2018. And he said, look, I have one product. You can just try to sell it, you know, because I know that you, you're doing this online. Uh, and I was like, yeah, of course. But I was back then I was completely into affiliate. So there's a, I didn't have any time, you know, and then after a few failed attempts with natives and in, in dating i said okay let's just i mean i can try it i can see what will happen and that's it and then i decided okay i will do a follow-along again on stagnant right. money um and we i created one very um, simple landing page on click funnels um and after i think like like one month probably when i start figured out which um payment methods to use, typos on the, on the landing page and all this stuff. Actually, yeah. I think like, yeah, after one month, I just decided, okay, this is it. I, I saw a huge opportunity because after one month, we were hitting in one week, like 250 orders, you know, yeah. but, but at, the, at, the, at the very beginning, this was like, holy shit, you know, so we can, I knew that I have something that it's extraordinary that we can scale this like mm -hmm. very because it's super hard to copy this product it's can you all, explain the product can you explain the product a little bit yeah, yeah of course so um the, the product it's it's a bottle uh and in this bottle is liquid and this liquid is uh it, it has ultra intense smell 
and hunters are using this on tree uh, so they just spill it on the tree trunk and because of this intense smell it attracts wild boars so in, in us they're like hawks wild hawks yeah, yeah. so um so they're using this to, to attract them on one place to, to hunt them later on right. so that, that's the it's a wild boar attractor yeah um so this is actually the this is the, the product and i was like i mean who will buy this on facebook you know it's like okay but but when I, so we have like, at the very beginning, we have, we have a killer video. So my father, he, he placed, um, it's called trail cam. So it's trail cam, it's a cam, camera that you put it on a tree trunk. Yeah. And when there is a movement, it starts recording. Motion sensor. It's yeah. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so we have like very cool video. I mean, very amateur looking, but <clears throat> when I turn this video on, I was like shocked because the CTR on Facebook, like CTR link CTR, not like all, but like yeah. how many people actually saw that. And the, after 10,000 impressions, it was like 20%. And I was like, what the hell? You know, it was like, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought it's fake. And then when the orders start hitting in, it, it was like, I mean, I, I called my dad and I was like, Did you, I think it was like Sunday. Uh, and I asked him, like, did you saw how many orders are in the Shopify? Yeah, yeah no worries. We will we'll do this, like, I mean, in ClickFunnels. No worries. We will do this, like, uh, tomorrow. And in, like, two hours, <laughs> he called me, like, he called me back and he was, like, uh, I don't know how we will do this. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, I'm alone. We don't have any products, the, the packaging. We didn't have anything, you know, because it was, like, more or less just a kind of a joke, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the funny thing, like there is one fun fact at the very big, because I'm not living at my dad's place. So I, I didn't know how all this stuff was actually, because I was not at home. Everything happened so fast. And I was like, when I saw that this is, this thing convert, it's converting, um, I started increasing the budget. I, I wanted to scale, you know, and, and he was calling me like every day, just stop it, stop it. We cannot produce all this stuff. And then I went yeah. home to see how this actually looks like. And this was one of the, the funniest uh, moments in life. It was like, everything was so amateur. My, my father was actually going into the store, the local store, and he was using those boxes that were like there for free. And in those yeah. boxes, he was putting our products inside. Oh inside. my God. <laughs> <laughs> a branding nightmare. Yeah, a branding, and I was like, what? I mean, Okay, but this was like, this was how, how, how we started. I mean, everything was like, uh, I mean, very, very amateur, you know, but yeah. they, but I mean, after like a few months, then we figured out, okay, we, we can scale this, but we need to go like step by step. Mm -hmm. um, we hired someone to, to make, because it's very hard to package this product. It's not just like that you put like a product and you put it in the envelope and send it, you know? Yeah. We need to mix this thing together. They're like huge barrels. And uh, yeah. it's like, then we need to buy the, a forklift and like, you know, wow. a lot of stuff that we need to do it before you can do this on a scale. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, this is how we started. Yeah, it was like very, like very fast because nobody actually expected mm -hmm. that this will happen. Um, but yeah, then I think like after one month, I know, okay, so this is it. Um, I stopped doing I, In the meantime, I also had some uh, consulting stuff. And so I just said, okay, I need to stop everything, like affiliate campaigns, consulting, everything, and just put my focus on this because I know that we have something that can work on the long term that yeah. uh, we can build a brand around it and yeah this is what we're doing right now it's incredible so i mean and how beautiful to be able to take your skills and create a family business around it too based off of what you learn in the sales center and also through yeah. marketing um so take it so what were the what were the orders like sorry when you just started and what are the orders like now at this point yeah so when, when you started, I mean, when we go through these initial problems, like um, the right payment methods, because like Germany, it's in, Euro, in Europe, probably Germany is one of the toughest market that you can, you can start with. Mm -hmm. But because Slovenia is so small that there's just 20,000 hunters, we decided, okay, let's, let's go to Germany. Because we know that like Germany, there are like many hunters. And my father's girlfriend, she's actually, she, she's native German. Girl. Mm -hmm. So 
it was a little bit easier because of like uh, the language barrier. So we decided to go with start with um, in Germany. So after first month when we started scaling, I think we were doing um, per a month we were doing around like thirty thousand uh, dollars. Okay. I'm sorry, thirty thousand euros. Um, like yeah, twenty five to thirty k was just in Germany, just online Facebook. Yeah. So right now, after like one month, we are around one hundred and fifty k per month. <laughs> um, but what's uh, what I think is, I mean, for me, what's uh, what I'm super happy about is that we are not depending only on Facebook, uh, right. because we are trying now to to put out this brand. Because right now we have very strong branding. I think that this brand Blackfire that we are building right now, it's probably yeah. the most popular. I mean, it's definitely the most popular in the niche that in the wild bear hunting. But it's it's something completely new, it, you know. Like all the because this industry it's so outdated that yeah. what we are working it, it it's um, people are very they're taking pictures, you know. Because I will show you like an example, you know. This is a bottle, you know. This is like our one of the bottles, and yeah. we are getting every day in our Instagram um, inbox pictures of people taking a, um, a selfie with this bottle, yeah, you know? So yeah. I have tons of generated content. content. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, so, so with, with that yeah, though, so right now, this, yeah. this, this must be like, this is perfect for influencer, influencer marketing. Like, I'm, I mean, just in, with, in the States alone, the, the reality shows popping up with these types of characters and this type of kind of genre is massive. It's been blowing up over the last, I don't know, I want to say decade. Um, European based, is that the same thing? Like, have you leveraged influencer marketing yet? Or what does that look like? So, I mean, in, in hunting, it's, it's a bit different because they're not like huge. We don't have like huge, when I say we, I think at the hunting industry. Um, so we don't have like huge um, influence. The, the biggest influencer is like 100K followers. Uh, but most of them, they're like between 15 to, to 50, you know? Yeah. So actually we are working, but they're just like, they're not a lot of them. And most of them, they're already working with us. Okay. Because when they see it and they're like, we, we don't pay them. We just give them free products. Uh, we give them some uh, hoodie with like black fire the protein. Black fire. Yeah. They, they're <laughs> part, yeah. We, we are building kind of a, we have like this black fire family. Army, so yeah, brand army. Once per, yeah, brand army kind of, and then we just we contact them and we tell them, look, because in every country, we decide, okay, we will work with five influencers, but only with like top notch. So we mm -hmm. decided to five of them, they will be our influencers. We will give them like products. We will give them um, hats and hoodies, and they will be like, we will give them everything they need, uh, just for free products. And they're like yeah. super happy to work with us. And uh, they're also, we are very careful because, you know, there's like a lot of, everyone would like to have like free products, but we are looking for those that actually produce some valuable content, that produce right. some like content around wild bird hunting, not mm -hmm. just like, hey, uh, this is like the best product, you know, no, I would like that, that they are doing like split tests. They're testing our products among some other or comp competitors, right. writing reports, then, we are sponsoring videos. This is something that it's very, um, very, it's hard to, to um, directly measure the results. But uh, when I see that some, uh, some videos on YouTube, you know, th these guys, most of them, they're not making a lot of money because like CPMs in, in hunting are super, super cheap. So what I'm doing, I'm just uh, contacting them. So I have an VA. She, when we find a YouTube channel that is in Europe that is doing some wild bear hunting created videos, yeah. we are sending them emails uh, that we would like to sponsor a video. We will yeah. give them free products, uh, and in return, they need to include our intro, and they need to talk at least uh, 30 seconds about our products in the video. Uh, so th this is actually working. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, for example, I, I can show you a video for the last time we did this. So I, I, I give the guy two boxes of our products, which is like 60 euros. Yeah. Uh, but the video got 100 uh, K video views. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> you know, so That's if amazing. I calculate this into CPM, I'm, so I'm not expecting direct sales because it's almost impossible to measure it, but, um, 
it's more about like uh, it was hard for me to switch you know i'm trying to merge this my affiliate slash performance mindset with branding because i know that branding is i mean i, I was always like I, I don't give a shit about branding i just want to run ads because i know that this is how i can make money but now as a brand owner i know that this is i mean if i can do both it's perfect way so this is actually my blueprint right now so i have like very very simple bl blueprint for example if when you open a new comp uh, country i know exactly what what are the steps you need to take to build a brand yeah in like a few months you know that that's i think that's our main competitive advantage right now because i know for example we open france okay we go there first we start spending five hundred dollars per day which is a lot for hunting you know for like for fashion this is like nothing but in germany mm -hmm. i mean in france there's audience of two million people yeah and when i start hitting five hundred dollars per day in like one month everyone who are uh, relevant for me will know about us then yeah. i uh, contact all top top five um f uh, influencers they start uh, doing giveaways they start talking about uh, us then we buy some uh, advertorials on top three uh, hunting magazines. Yeah. And this is it, you know, in, in, in like in two months, everybody, okay, so what the hell is Black Fire? You know, and this is how, because <laughs> it, it takes us like one and a half to two months with this kind of activities before we start getting store owners contacted us without any distributors. So, so to that point, um... You know, our last call, we had been discussing uh, some of the affiliate hacks that you were um, applying to getting into retailers, because uh, obviously yeah. traditionally you were D2C, um, but do you want to allude to like one of your favorite affiliate hacks on how you're actually getting into retail stores? Yeah, yeah, sure. So actually the, my favorite hack was, I think just like two weeks uh, Okay, so my that by far my favorite um, hack few months I'm totally into cold emailing. <laughs> I mean, it, it's kind of fun because I would say, okay, cold mail this this just doesn't work. But for me, it's like insane return on investment. So here is actually the how, how I'm doing right now. Uh, so in every industry, in every industry on this planet, they have some major brands that. Yeah. Uh, if you visit their web corp web pages, you will find in um, that they list all the um, authorized dealers and distributors in every single country. Yeah. So I did this for in, in our hunting brand, for example, Browning is uh, their gun producers from France. Uh, they're like kind of like a Bentley, you know, if you're buying a car. Yeah. Uh, so if you go on their web page, uh, you can find. For example, for Germany, you can find every single authorized dealer that is selling their products. Yeah. And in most cases, you can also find their um, contacts, like for um, uh, address, zip code, uh, store name, and also store email. Phone number. Many. Yeah. For, yeah. Exactly. So I scrap all the emails. So for, I, I will give you like an, an example for for uh, for France. In France, there is between 100 and through, uh, I mean, 1,300 to 1,500 stores in France, hunting stores. So yeah. right now I have, till last week, I have like more than 1,000 emails from hunting stores. So what we did was um, I created like a mailshake campaign. So the mailshake campaign, it's, uh, you can connect it directly to the, your Google Gmail account. Sure. And uh, the last time, I mean, the last blast that I sent out was, so I sent out, I think, around uh, 600 emails. And the, the idea was very simple. So I sent them like um, in the subject line, it was like subject line was like four store name, you know, like four chat, just yeah. that it was replaced with a store name. And then it's a plain text. And in the plain text, I, um, I say, okay, so my name is Timothy Brand. You probably already heard about Black Fire, the famous white bird tractor that's uh, taking the world by storm, la la la, this like very yeah. aggressive affiliate approach. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, and, but the, the, the main trigger inside the email is that I send, the, I embed a photo, an image of a roll up. 
Okay, so our brand image is very attractive. So we have those roll-ups. Yeah. And on this roll-up, I put there is a service that uh, that you I found that you, you can actually gen, gen you can generate uh, personalized images on the fly. So in our case, what I did was I, I sent out those 600 emails uh, with the um, roll up inside the, the plain text email. And in this image, there was a roll up and I placed store name on the roll up. And I yeah. told them, look, so if you decide to buy one pallet of our products, uh, I already have a roll up for you, and I will give you this roll up for 50% off. Which does and not here exist. Here is the <laughs> Of course not. <laughs> but it, it looks, com it's not a mock, you know, because it's actually a real picture, but then you, you can just put, because like I, I can share the, the, the service, it's like amazing service that uh, it offers you to build on the fly personal images. And um, so the results were that we, after the first blast, we got, 40 40 hot leads so in my case hot lead is when a store owner reply to an email and say hey i would like to receive a terms and the price list and my and full free like, pull up yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and um so yeah this is actually what uh, works the best for us because what offers me this is because like we have like very high profitability in uh, mm -hmm. because we are very we don't want to have many employees just everything we try to optimize yeah and uh, this kind of approach enables me to that i'm i'm not working with distributors we are going direct you know and this is how we are using my affiliate skill set to bypass the distributor to go directly to the hunting store because i want to have a relationship with them because, because this is actually my main asset that i have a Absolutely. network of 300 stores and yeah. this is actually what, what build a brand and, and, and I asked it in the long term. Amazing. And, and so to this point, like it's getting at scale almost. Um, I'm sure you've got VAs like scraping the emails unless you've got a program yeah. for that. But yeah. what does your team look like at this point? Obviously your dad's in the cook kitchen drumming up the new uh, wild boar, black fire. But what's your team? Yeah, I mean, so in, in marketing, I'm alone. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we have just in the production line, we have right now, uh, we have three three person but then this is it and I, I mean for now we are good for like a lot because with the the, system, the production line is uh, optimized in a way that right now we can put out a lot of products mm -hmm. uh, with just three people because everything is actually it's optimized and we we invest actually at the, at the very beginning for the first six months of the profit we invest all the money actually to to set up a very optimized a very Smart. um optimized um digital i, I mean production line so okay. but yeah right now I, i'm in marketing i'm just alone you know it's because i i have a few vas but this is not something someone that would be full-time you know because right. yeah because the one of the long term i see this as a when if we start with I'm using internet just as an entry point for getting into the stores, you know, but when, Absolutely. once we are in the store, it's much easier for us. So we have a, a actually, I have a part-time guy who is a kind of a key, key, uh, key account manager. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because so this guy will actually manage all those stores because that I realized that sense. Yeah. exactly because right now I'm spending, I mean, I, I want to be in this, hacking mode you know I, I want to like think about campaigns like the one that i told you about cold yeah. emailing so if i want to be in this mindset in this uh, uh then i don't i cannot work i, I cannot be in you touch wanna, with my stores exactly. yeah you don't want to work if you in the business it. you don't want to work in the business yeah. you work yeah. on on the business and, yeah. and the, yeah. you definitely need to remove yourself especially for the creative yeah creative thinking yeah. models. Um, yeah. So I think this has been awesome. This has been super formative. I know I've learned a lot of things. Um, I want to know, like, what is the future of Wild Boar? Like, are you taking this global to just get solidified in Europe? Or what's what do you guys see the next few years looking like? Yeah, so um, yeah, first thing is, I mean, our first, let's say, short term goal, which is until the end of this year, is that we want to be in 100 stores in Europe. Okay, so first thing, it's like in France, we want to be in like a dominant player that it's 
very self-sustainable with very, very high profitable business and that we have 100 stores that are actually buying from us which can actually happen maybe already next month because we just closed the deal with Dehatlon. Dehatlon is actually one of the, the biggest sporting gear uh, seller in, in, in Europe and they will we have a contract with them for like 200 stores mm -hmm. um, so the long term I mean for this year it's the idea to go to focus just on direct uh, I mean on retail market mm -hmm. and using online uh, to open new countries on the same way as we did in Ger uh, in France and Germany right right so and when we open all the biggest countries so Spain Sweden France and Poland and when we have like a network uh, and process and everything ready then we will go to to the states probably next year Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that if we go in the state to this product, th this would be like a killer, you know, because I, I know there are uh, two or uh, three similar products in Texas, I mean, in, in, in the States, but it, it's completely different. It's um, because I know the ingredients and I know what kind of stuff is in our product and I know what kind of stuff they're selling it. And I know mm -hmm. that when we will get first 100 customers in the States, People will get, they will get obsessed with it, you know, because our repurchase rate is through the roof. Because when once they buy it and when they see, okay, this actually works, it's just like, okay, I want this every single month. Right. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the end goal is definitely to go to to the states. Um, but for now, I think we like just uh, we can do everything in 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 Europe because it's still. I think we are at the very very beginning. Um, because I mean, just in France, there is like almost 2000 hunting stores. So right now we are working with like 50, you know, yeah. <laughs> so there is, <laughs> I think there is still a lot of room for growth. Uh, I just need to like be in the, this affiliate mindset all the time. And as soon, as long as I'm in this mindset, I think we can grow very fast because especially because it's very hard for, for example, Right now, we don't have a direct competitor. I mean, we mm -hmm. have local competitors, for example, in, in France. We have one guy who is working this already 25 years. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a competitor who will go and do the, the dirty job. For example, we are going in every single country. We have localized um, customer support, localized landing pages, uh, telephone support. Uh, payment methods so we have in Italy cash on delivery uh, Klarna in Germany you know we have like because I know for every single country I know exactly if I want to optimize for the conversion rate I need to know exactly what is the specific of every single country because Europe as a market is I mean it can be very tough if you don't know local specifics it's different yeah. than new zealand uk and so on but because i'm based in europe it's much easier for me because i have a lot of friends doing uh, um, e-commerce in this country so i know yeah, exactly course. for every single uh, which payment methods so this is actually our competitive advantage and uh, the second one is that also if there will be one um let's say competitor who will say okay so let's go against them there is money that they can make if they will, they need someone like me. They need yeah, someone exactly. who will, you know, because it's very hard to outsource this kind of stuff to an agency because it's, they need a content. They need like someone who will go into the forest and do all these crazy videos because my father, he's recording videos all the time. Yeah. Um, so I think they will come competitors. That's for sure. But I think we are still on a good path, and uh, before they will catch us, we will already be in three, four hundred stores, and it will be much easier to breathe and to have like a cash flow and everything there for uh, just to be always a few steps uh, ahead. Absolutely, this is uh, it's the it's the beautiful thing to hear of the the marketer's journey of everything that you've learned along the way and how you're applying the affiliate mindset to uh, you know traditional products and and how I think a lot of um, you know product owners in the traditional sense have a lot of things to worry about with affiliates kind of entering the space like this. You're proving yeah. that it's uh, it's yeah. a different time and. If for them to be able to, like you said, outsource this to an agency, it's uh, it's yeah. going to take a longer approach yeah. while you're already hitting the ground running. Um, 
This has been super informative, yeah. a lot of fun, Timote. Uh, I yeah. really, I really did enjoy it, and and hopefully we can have you back on another call soon. Um, but yeah, yeah, sure. It's been great, and uh, look forward to the next call, man. Perfect, cool. Thank you, Chad. So have a great day, and let's keep up in touch. You bet. All right. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Bye bye.